Here we go. How many We're weeks here. Have you been? It's been two. It's been two weeks, at least Just two, two weeks. I was, it feels like three. No, I think it's longer than that, because I think I'm gonna put this up on here, so that you can hear Pastor Randy. Um, can you hear us? That light is lit up, and the volume is turned up. Let us know where you're watching from. <coughs> you are Q and A with Pastor Kim. I forget his name. I know you haven't been around for a while. <laughs> Pastor Randy, yeah. PG. Merry Christmas. Merry Christ Christmas. Mess. Love it. Christ How you Christ. feeling, boss? Oh. Inquiring, ones, inquiring minds want to know. They've been praying for yeah, you. Yeah, I'm not 100%, but, you know, I'm, I'm feeling okay. You're you actually on the sound. <coughs> oh, no. Yesterday you sounded a little Much better, better, and then yeah. today back Dropping on your head? Um, you know, I just still have a lot of coughing at night time, and so I think that affects me differently, you know. Affects your throat, too, yeah, probably just it raspy. Does. It does. Well, you look good. Well, you're, you're a good man to say that. But let me, now, let me finish. I didn't finish. <laughs> don't cut him off. <laughs> don't cut me off. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, I don't care. We're going to try. We have a bunch of stuff going on. If you have not already invited somebody to our Christmas Eve service, two and four, two and four, two and four. Uh, it is a Saturday. Somebody just today told me they didn't realize that Christmas Eve was a Saturday. So it is a Saturday. Plan to be a part of that. Uh, I'd love to have you join us for that. It's a little too far to the right. There we go. At least I'm in the shot now. And, and then as you get towards the end, it makes you look chubbier. So that's the way the lens works. So if you get over here, look. In the middle, look at so. my faces. <laughs> Pastor Randy's in the, in the center, yeah. That's the deal. He, I just do what you tell me. He doesn't actually work out. It's <laughs> all it's all know. lights and photography. That's it's it. all, all <laughs> mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Every 72-year-old every man looks like this. <laughs> now, I, I was going somewhere with the two and four. Naturally. But, but uh, plan to join us because we have a lot of incredible things in our Christmas Eve service, one of which there's a rehearsal for taking place uh, at 1 o'clock. So I, I have to roll around then. I got a little bit of wiggle room because they can get started without me and, and then I can dive over. But thanks for joining us. Share it. Let us know where you're watching from. Hi, Miss Liz. I'll see you in a little bit over there with all the littles. Uh, we have Kathy Kedney's online. Christina Leahy all the way from South Carolina. Miss mm. Debbie Tirani. Mark Stalnaker, my man. <coughs> Bless you. I'm not supposed to be contagious. Contagious. It's all right. I mean. We feel safer now. I do. You don't sound as bad as you did before. Okay, I think it's time, Pastor Kim. What do you okay. think? We have gathered quite a many questions. Questions over the last for days. Couple weeks. So we're going to try to knock some out that we can do fast too, mm -hmm. and we'll see. We'll see yeah. where we get with all these. But um, one <coughs> um, <coughs> genealogy of mm -hmm. Jesus. Since we got Christmas coming here, yep. the genealogy of Jesus is it through <coughs> Mary or Joseph? Was Mary a descendant from David or by marriage? And then a follow-up. So if Joseph was the line of David, then how is Jesus David's root? Uh, Matthews is tracing Joseph. Joseph was Jesus' legal guardian, and so they traced it for that reason. Luke's traces it through Mary. So that, that's the simple answer. And both are in the lineage, both are in the lineage. of David. That's <laughs> nice, easy, quick, fast answer. Yeah, that's what I said. I told both. you. Both. Some of these we can answer fast. Yeah. Okay. Got two questions that go back to that message you did a couple weeks ago that kind of talked about some aliens and mm -hmm. stuff, you know? Yep. So, on one of them, Deuteronomy, it says the Most High assigned nations their lands. He determined where people should live. He assigned each nation a heavenly body. Or heavenly being. A, oh, a heavenly being, I'm sorry. And then Psalm says God presides over heaven's courts. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings. So, mm -hmm. if God assigned these heavenly beings after Satan's rebellion, does this mean that more angels rebelled after this yep. initial big event yes, rebellion. Yes, absolutely. There was the initial rebellion in heaven. We have no sense of when that occurred, but then there were other rebellions after that, um, which could even be one of the explanations how the Nephilim were on earth after the flood mm. you know, as well. So. Wow, yeah, I had never heard that. Like, I would always thought of it, the rebellion. This is when it occurred. Miss Alex is telling us to aim it. the mic towards Pastor Randy, maybe? She's using sign language, and she's, oh. she's towards Pastor Randy. Oh, <laughs> she, she's saying. You can just tell us. You don't have to whisper. I know. What we're getting. Sign language. 
Well, we'll definitely have to learn what the signs mean. Yes, yes. <laughs> so she, Alexa's saying for you to look at the camera. Oh. Not put your head oh, down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of... You look even funnier. <laughs> deep, in, deep in thought. Yeah. yeah I, really I told okay. him that earlier. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, he's My mind is just, I'm kind of... In a thought mode. So we have a lot of these going on, and then he's preparing two messages and another message that's for well, uh, three messages. Three messages. Three yeah. messages. So my, I asked him that earlier. He looked a little pensive. So he is. He's a little. Yeah, a little he's bit. not downcast. No, no, he's not down. No, he's I'm pensive. Just distracted because my mind is kind of really somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so would they still be rebelling now, or do you think since Christ in the full revelation, the heavenly realm is? It's an interesting question. Um, scripture doesn't indicate. I would tend to think there, there's been a stabilization since yeah. the full revelation of God in Christ. Okay. Yeah. That's fascinating. But, 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 you, that's would, but you wouldn't pure, say... Pure conjecture. You yeah. wouldn't say that it's out, outside the realm of possibility. <clears throat> no, and, and we do know that um, during the tribulation, there's going to be you know all kinds of extravagant um, mm -hmm. rebellious activity, and whether that will include ones that previously had not been mm -hmm. or... Or not, we, we don't know for sure. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. In that message, you'd also said that we're not born immortal. Mm -hmm. So then what happens to ah, people who don't yes. put their trust in Christ? Because we always learn, church mm -hmm. world, then if, if you don't trust Christ because you're immortal, you spend eternity in hell. Right. Um, so if we're not born immortal. That's, yeah. a, that's a long question. Is that, oh. that was one of the short ones? Uh, no, I, that's the one I said would be longer. But, oh, but, sorry, you but, told me to answer that no, one. I'm that's sorry. why I put this question mark. But, well, but anyway, I, I, I can answer it pretty quickly maybe. Uh, Genesis 3.22 makes very clear that the reason that Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden is so that they don't eat of the tree of life and live forever. So clearly they did not have immortality. Uh, it says in 1 Timothy, I wish you could remember the chapter now, I think it's 5 or something, like that, that only... Christ, or only God, as He revealed Himself to Christ, has immortality. Um, you know, Romans six twenty three says the gift of God is eternal life or immortality in Christ Jesus. Or Romans two seven it says, blessed are those that, that are seeking immortality. So immortality is not something we possess. That that teaching really started in Egypt. It went from Egypt to Greece. Um, Alexander made you know the. Uh, Greek culture and language so prominent that the Jews kind of fell under that spell and by the third century, I mean third century after Jesus, they, they were uh, some of these church fathers, they call them, they were teaching this stuff that we're born immortal. Well the scripture never says we're born immortal. I mean you can take a simple verse, you know John 3.16 God's love of the Lord, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish what does perish mean but have eternal wow. life? Yeah, so um, obviously we don't have immortality or eternal life it's something that god has to give so um but that's that, not what's taught mainstream no right no it, it's not and then then of course you have the key passage matthew i believe it's matthew 10 28 where jesus is saying you know don't don't be afraid of humans he says but but if you're going to fear somebody fear the one that can impact your life forever he says fear the one who can destroy both body and you guys know the next word soul so, in hell. Well, what is hell? Hell was a trash dump in Jesus' time. It was a place where things that had become useless were finally disintegrated. They, they were put out of existence. Revelation 2015 uh, it says there's the great white throne judgment. And it says all those that were not written in the book of life uh, undergo something called the second death. Well, what is the first death? I cease to exist on this mortal plane. I can't, I can't impact anything. Well, wouldn't the second death be consistent with that, that, that I cease to exist? Now, of course, this gets into a really big teaching that I've taught in Bible mm. Institute. I, I don't have any problem with those that believe that um, those that go to hell or the lake of fire, whatever term they want to use, they suffer eternally. I don't believe that's what Scripture teaches. That doesn't fit the character of God. It doesn't fit the justice of God. I'm only on this earth 100 years. Why should I be punished forever? You know, that doesn't fit. God is gracious. He's always looking to be kind and, and merciful. So annihilation fits better. So what that would mean is that the, those that reject God's grace and all the, the damage that they have done to themselves, to the planet, to other human beings, they will incur exact justice. God, God can do that. He, he could make them experience exactly what they dished out. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he would mercifully 
put them out of existence. The angels in, in that psalm that are quoted in that passage, I believe it's Psalm 89, they, they are warned that though, though you're called gods, you will die like mere men, meaning they will have, they had possession. Here, here's the other thing we don't understand about immortality. Immortality is not something once you get it, you got it, and it's, it's there forever. You read Revelation 22, it talks about, you know, people are just constantly eating of this, this good fruit that grows by the water of life. And the idea, if nothing else, is that immortality only continues as we stay united to Christ. It's, uh, he's the vine, we're the branch. If his life is not flowing in us, we're not going to have immortality. So the notion that immortality can be something independent, that you're indestructible, and that's how it's looked upon. Oh, we got to do something with sinners and rebellious angels since they're indestructible. Well, that, that just isn't supported, in my opinion, by Scripture. Mm -hmm. However, those that take that view, I respect that. That, your that, brother. that has been the traditional view, mm -hmm. uh, albeit there's a lot of people these days that are re-examining these scriptures. Yeah. And, and, and I'll just say this, that, that the, uh, the teaching that, that God will mercifully put out of existence, uh, human beings and even angels, with the exception of maybe the beast, Satan, and the false prophet, they, they might be punished forever because of the, the seriousness of their crimes. Um, that, that shows a, a beautiful side, once again, of God's character, His grace, which is always existent, as opposed to this eternal uh, angry being that we can't even explain i sin a hundred years and you're going to punish me forever and ever uh, and, 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 it's, and it's torment i'm going to punish you i'm going to torment you why how would that fit with god's eternal purpose it it, it doesn't fit it doesn't make sense whereas the um, justice exact justice followed by ultimate annihilation does make sense to me to me and i know i'm, I'm, I'm who, who was the first pushing it strongly but. who was the who was the first one to start begin teaching this and what was the basis for which they again it was uh, started really getting traction in the third century after Jesus the um, part of these guys the church fathers and I'm trying to think of the, the, the names and it, it's not Tertullian or, or origin but it, it, anyway that's where it started getting traction a lot of things got traction in the third and fourth century that frankly are just horrible I mean Augustine you know, he really started the ball rolling for predestination, arbitrary predestination. Uh, Calvin picked it up and, you know, systematized it, you know, much later. But it started with, with Augustine. So th these guys that we revere, we have to remember, they were just men, and they were trying to understand the heart of God. Right. But they, they were fallible. You know, they, they, were, they were not writing scripture. They were writing their ideas and their cultures uh, affected them tremendously. It's just like the whole, I'm drifting, I know, but the whole penal substitution of the atonement. It really, Don't come, go. It really, it really <laughs> comes from medieval, medieval culture in which if you sin against the Lord of the manor, mm -hmm. your punishment is much higher than it would be if you just sin against your fellow peasant. And that's how they justify eternal sufferings because you sin against the high God and, you know, the Father's wrath and mm -hmm. has to be poured out on somebody. So, anyhow. Okay. But, but basically, so immortality eternal, is, a, is a free gift of God through Christ. It is as we trust in Christ and we become united in spirit. <coughs> united in spirit means much, much more than what we take it to be today. We, we think it just means assenting to a few truths about Christ. Uh-uh. It means I love the way he thinks. And I... <laughs> And I love the way he feels, and I love his life. That's the way every life should be. I love his kingdom. I, I want to do his will. I want to be like him. It, it embraces an awful lot. We have cheapened this thing. We have watered it down to assenting to a few truths. And, oh, old Joe's got a good heart, and he, he believes in Jesus, you know. And, 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 and we're deceiving these people. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just, I mean, Jesus called people to be his disciples, his followers. Um, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. Mm -hmm. If I'm not following Jesus because I like him, I trust him, I want to be like him, then I have no reason to believe that I have eternal life. And, and this is nothing to do with works, nothing to do with mm -hmm. achievement or personal holiness. It's, it's about I either trust him or I don't trust him. Yeah. So. Anyway. His way is right or my way is right. Okay. Yeah. Can, it's it's can that I... simple. Go ahead. Move us for another. more questions. Yeah. We'll keep us I, do, but I, I, you did I know he's going to keep asking more questions. I, so. I, I like going down the first time I heard you teach that most of my life as a 
a Bible college graduate. I was taught eternal, what is it? It's eternal mental torment. There's a word there I'm missing. Eternal something torment. Conscious? Would that be? Eten, in, eternal conscious torment. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and that's, it does. It seems like that's... And, and honestly, there are only two passages in all the Bible that seem to teach that when you really examine them carefully, and both of those can be... Uh, explained in light of the dare nearly I, dare I ask? <laughs> so it in our hearts. Uh, no, Ma Matthew twenty five. What is it? Twenty five thirty six. Um, those will go into everlasting yeah. torment, and then there's one in Revelation twenty. It's talking about the beast and the false prophet. I'm, I might have the wrong. It might be fourteen. A anyway, there's only two. But when you look at the enormous number of scriptures in Old and New Testament, that if you just read them as they are. They're teaching a cessation of, mm -hmm. of existence, you know. And of course, even that psalm, he's talking to angel, angelic beings, and he's calling them, you are called gods, meaning that they are, you know, much more powerful than we yeah, are. Us. But he says, but you're, you're going to die too, like mortal men. In other words, he's taking, they had the capacity to live immortal. Im immortally, but only if they stayed united to the will of God. So he's taking that immortality from them. So God is the only one that possesses immortality. Well, that's another that's another another Q and A. We got when we got more time. Okay, I like it. It's really good. I I thoroughly enjoy that. Okay, so we're going to go from deep to just yeah Santa Claus. Okay, okay? <laughs> Santa so, Claus. Um, somebody said a friend is feeling judged by their Christian parents because she and her husband allow their kids to believe in Santa. So, what are your uh, thoughts about allowing Santa to be part of Christmas if you're a Christ follower? Um, you know, it, it, it's really a, a small issue that at various developmental seasons in a Christian's life, you can distort and make them bigger than ever. I, I remember as a young Christian going through a period where I was much like the people that they say are tormenting them. I was <laughs> so anti-Santa Claus because, you know, I felt like this is not what this event is about. And, and, and Santa Claus provides nothing. He is nothing. He's no one. And wait gonna, a minute. Wait I'm a minute. line of my kids <laughs> about... Spoiler alert! <laughs> Spoiler alert! If your kids are watching... Yeah, you know, and... And if I'm going to lie to my kids about him, how are they going to ever know what I'm telling Tell the truth, truth about Jesus? Jesus. Yeah. So there was a time that I was very edgy about that. And, you know, I grew and I realized, okay, there's lots of traditions that countries have developed through the years. They're harmless for the most part. Um, so I, I think you've just got to accept that those people that are being very critical of you now, they're at a, they're at a stage where what they're doing, they believe they're doing to honor God. And so just learn to forbear with them. Don't take it too personal. Forgive uh, go and forbear. do Go and do your thing. But just make very sure your kids know what the real meaning of the season is and that everything we have, every present comes from the, the kindness and benevolence of God, um, not from some dude in a red suit. <laughs> well, now, you so know, I don't know how you work that you, one out. But if it makes you, <laughs> go ahead, Pastor Kim. Yeah. If it makes you feel better, too, I mean, the origins of Santa Claus are in nature good. St. Nicholas and what he did. And yeah, yeah, if you want to throw that in there, I mean, it does. Makes you feel like I say, it, it, it's, I, 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 I'm going to probably have to be careful because I do have a lot of pretty strong feelings about some of our, you? our stories that we tell <laughs> kids. You know sound I, mean? like, <laughs> I feel like I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I've learned to keep my mouth shut and be, <laughs> to be gracious with people, but um, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with a lot of the stories and a lot of the traditions that we pass on to our kids. So I'll, I'll just stop there. But for the, the ultimate question, what are your thoughts about allowing Santa to be part of Christmas? Would you say it's, it's sort of your decision? We, you would encourage, like you say, being honest, but... Yeah, what, what I did with my kids when they were young is um, I told them the truth. What, what Christmas was about, and I said, Santa is just something that people have developed. It's a fun character, and then I told them, I said, now don't you ever spoil this for your friends. Don't, <laughs> don't you say this around your little friend. <laughs> now, I don't know how well that worked. <laughs> they probably went and said, my daddy said. <laughs> I had a, I mean, <laughs> Tooth Fairy Santa, there's a whole lot of, uh, you know. It's similar, similar, but my, I believe my parents just It'll it'll kick people off. Oh, okay. Um, oh. There was yeah, good job, boss. So we're back. <laughs> Who is the real Santa Claus? That's the question. Um, so I was gonna say that we we didn't. There were seasons growing up when we wouldn't get 
I'm going to say as many presents. Yeah. And our parents yeah. didn't want us to think it was because we were bad or had made bad decisions. <laughs> so, because that's the whole thing, you know. Yeah. So we didn't get presents. Yeah. But I was good. I was good. Yeah, I told yeah. people about Jesus. I sang on stage. Like, I was a good person. So that. <laughs> so, so. You, you did something to anger the fat man. In yeah, the, exactly. In a <laughs> calorically challenged guy in a red suit. Yeah. Uh, so, right. so we were right. also told, don't tell, don't ruin it for your friends. But, because mm -hmm. I think my. My cousin, who might be watching. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and so it's a it's a balance. And, and try to keep in mind, it is not a big deal. No, it really is not. Yeah. No. But I remember feeling like it was a big deal. So I know what mm -hmm. that stage is like. And, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll pass. <laughs> it does. Yeah. You get a little older. A lot of stuff Nobody. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Nobody loves you. How about fasting? <laughs> Matthew chapter 6 talks about fasting. Is this referencing actual fasting from food, or is it a metaphor for other things? No, it actually is fasting from food. Mm -hmm. Boom. Easy answer. There yes. we go. Good. That's funny. What's another one that was... Like, I'm fasting social media. Yeah. That's not a fast. Which well, it isn't <laughs> bad, though, to do. No, it's not bad. I can show you this list, which will help you. All the ones that I numbered are fast answers. If oh, there you go. There you go. Look at... Now we're working together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See if you see a number by it, it's a fast answer. But I don't. So I don't. I don't even have that question. That's then. how you can just read it off that one right just there. Roll, oh, man. Just roll. But just so read. you don't think we did this? Isn't God calling us the same as Him revealing Himself to us? I think this is a dance of semantics. Free will exist. Yes, and that comes from a message I did from Second Peter. Okay. Um, and that person is right on target because in Second Peter chapter one it says that He called us by His own grace and glory. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, uh, I believe it's chapter 4, uh, let's see, verse 12, um, 12 and 13, it says he, he calls us by the gospel. So this is not some mysterious, secretive, inward, effectual calling. <laughs> this is a general calling to all, and the means are the glory of Christ. We're drawn to him. We, we, we see a different yeah. quality of life than we've ever seen, and we want to know him, and we want to learn his ways. The gospel message, again, it's about Christ, his sacrificial love and the life of Jesus and so forth. So that message calls us. It offers us forgiveness and restoration of, of identity and soul and all like that. So the calling goes out to everyone. We absolutely have free will. And that, that's what this person makes a point of. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, if you read the whole Bible, God treats us as if we are free-willed beings throughout from cover to cover, mm -hmm. and yet there are some that will isolate a few oddball passages that can be easily explained and try to say, oh, no, God is this master puppeteer, and he controls mm -hmm. everything. We, we're living in, <laughs> in the matrix. We think we're free, but we're not we're free. Not, He's yeah. controlling our Automaton droids. Yeah. Which, which that makes God very, very small. And it proves yeah. Satan's argument Petty. that nobody really loves God for himself or ever yeah. would. He has to bribe him or scare him. Yeah. They even it said there, God's sovereignty does not negate free will. Yeah, so. yeah, very well said. All right, in Matthew chapter 7, there's a phrase, profaning the holy. What does this paragraph yeah, mean? Yeah, it's the casting your pearls before swine passage. Um, mm -hmm. And Jesus is talking about <clears throat> proclaiming the message of God and God's kingdom to those who are in a state of um, disrespect or disinterest. Uh, they're closed for whatever reason. We all have seasons in our life where we're closed. And Jesus is saying, be, be wise. Don't don't go spewing out, you know, saying, you know, these wonderful things about God and his kingdom and the offer of mercy and forgiveness to people who just don't give a rip. And all they're going to do is mock you, make fun of you, and, and trash the message. Now, this doesn't mean that there won't come a time when they will be open and serious. But if they're not serious-minded, the, the message of God and his kingdom is way too valuable to allow mm -hmm. people to turn it into mockery. You know? Okay. It's good. You got something to say, or mm -mm. <laughs> I was gonna, but I we think have, there's some other. Short we have four, ones we we have may, four, may four minutes left. Oh, we've already done that one. Um, how about the one, the video, the guy? Um, oh, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. presentation was done during the July 28th Commonwealth Games. Mm -hmm. Uh, wanted to know what your thoughts. They came across this 10 minutes worth of watch. Uh, I had no clue this even took place. It's a very interesting, compelling interpretation. What of the is event. it? Give us some context. So it was the Commonwealth Games. The Commonwealth Games. And it was the whole opening ceremony yeah. of it. Yeah, the Commonwealth it was Games. Shocking. Man. I take it like a British. It's a big, big deal in Europe. Uh, in like Olympics? Sort of. No, uh, kind of like, I mean, I'm not even sure what events take place in it. I'm, um, I'm going to look at a, a lot of games that lead up to the Olympics. You know, there's a lot of tournaments mm -hmm. and things. And so 
Uh, I, I watched the video, and I got to say, it is utterly shocking. I, I mean, th this thing was viewed by millions and millions of people, and the fact that they would pour the money into putting something like this together, it, it, it shows this this Moloch, big, big enormous bull, bull mm -hmm. and these slave women dragging it in there, and, 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 and they show this star exploding and these charges of the stars going to these people and they each take the chart and then their houses lift off. I, I mean, it is so full of the occult. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and, and so full of a... It does. It looks like an Olympic style. I mean, there's mm -hmm. looks yeah. like there's mm -hmm. there's running, there's racing, there's bike riding, there's... It, um, it is a shocking bit. You can't believe that this kind of paganism is being detailed out. They spent tons of money, mm -hmm. clearly. The whole Mates. Tower of Babel yeah. thing that they turn into a Moloch fiery yeah. oven. and I mean, it's it's just <laughs> remarkable. It's like, what the heck does this have to do with a, with a sporting event? Yeah. And then it's the key part is that Prince Charles, who is now King Charles, was at the event. Now, uh, for over 30 years, People have been saying that he's the Antichrist. I do <laughs> not believe that in any way, shape, or form. Does he, 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 um, he can't fit the... No. Three. Well, for a number of reasons. I, I mean, I, I don't doubt that he might be a nefarious guy. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't doubt that he might be a secret, you know, in the closet, Satan worshiper, a Lu Luciferian is the way he would probably categorize mm -hmm. himself because they see Lucifer as the light giver, oh, the fair. freedom giver. Yeah. And um, so... But, but somebody, whoever put that together, they knew what they were doing. Uh, it, it reminds me of this recent Child's commercial where there was all these, these little teddy bears in bondage outfits. And then all around the room where the shots were there, this was all over the news, man. And uh, it, it brought a lot of, a lot of fallout. Um, if you looked at, if you zoomed in, all the books around the, the, the room where the kids were being shot and all the paper, uh, newspaper headings, they all had to do with laws being passed about uh, allowing children and adults to have sexual freedom with one another. And I mean, it, it was bad news. And this company, I wish you could remember, Valencia, Valenciaga is the name of the company, um, big fashion designer, and, and, and even that uh, girl, Kim Kardashian, she even dumped them because, because of it. Mm. You know, what was so, the purpose so they, of the commercial? Well, they they never, they, Balenciaga was trying to distance himself. We don't know why our people put this commercial together, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it was really nightmarish. When they, when they detailed out all the stuff that was in there, now the average person probably wouldn't we notice it. it. Yeah. yeah, but this was clearly all put in place for a reason. So my point is that when you look at what happened at these games, um, somebody spent tons of money, and they had a very clear uh, narrative they were trying to communicate, albeit under an occult enough veil that only those that are initiated mm -hmm. would really pick up on it. Most people would not. But it was the most paganistic thing. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I watched just part of it. Yeah, like, there, there, there it is. Um, like they're denying. I but mean... It, we would like to address the controversy surrounding our recent ad campaign. We strongly condemn child abuse. It was never our intent to include our narrative. <laughs> and yet, like, oh. when you read all the stuff that was around the room that was picked up on, everything was about, you know, let's it, open It reflects the a series of grievous it. errors. Right, right, right now, our, uh, I shouldn't say this, but uh, <laughs> our president talked recently about protecting the rights of children. And it was in the context of allowing doctors to permit uh, sexual surgery, sex change surgery, and sexual drug uh, dr drugs to, you know, a atrophy, mm -hmm. yeah, their, their development. And he was calling that, we need to protect the children's rights. So what he was saying, our president, is that they, they should be treated, their children, they're eight or nine or 10, they should be treated as adults. Well, wait a minute now. If you're saying they have the sexual rights of an adult, well, then, then does that mean then that they can also involve themselves with mm -hmm. adults? Why not? That there is evil, evil being unleashed on our children that the world has never seen before. Mm. Wow, I don't know how I missed this. But it, I mean, this is terrible. Oh, yeah. So bad that... The more you read, the more you see the, the objects they put out and the messaging in the objects, the darker it is. I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they, they were... This is deep, occult, Luciferian stuff. And, mm. and of course, it's... I mean... They're, they want to seize this particular generation of children. 
Yeah, there's um, references to child pornography in it. I mean, it's oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. That's the commercial you. That's were the commercial. About? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but this is a yeah. But this other thing, the the, the games, it, it's equally shocking. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you see it, you're just like, what the heck? Yeah. What is it's this like a movie yeah. with a oh, it's a very long 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 long. Long. It's like, Well, there are stuff. And the occult <laughs> sim- symbols and everything are just mm-hmm. over the top. I mean, but but again, Prince Prince Charles, who's now King Charles, I do not think he is to be looked at as a candidate as the Antichrist. I, I've said before, I'll say again, I am almost 100 oh. percent convinced uh, the Antichrist will not be all human. It, it, it will at best be a hybrid, or at worst, purely angelic, masquerading as a human. Yeah, but doesn't the yeah okay never mind. Then that gets into a much bigger subject. Yeah, yeah. I was say we're gonna. <laughs> uh, okay, one, one more. Yeah, one more. more? Oh, I mean, Give us one more. One more. Well, uh, is there another easy with simple the one, one about um, the Apostles' Creed? Would that? Uh, that's a long one. one. That's a long one. one. The books of Daniel. Anything here? Anything uh, here, Pastor? I, I can answer that one. The, bo- the books of Daniel. Uh, well, go, let go me ahead, read, read the question. question. Uh, were the added books of Daniel in the Catholic Bible, Bible, chapters 13, 14, found or written after Daniel 1 through 12 were written? Curious the history of this and why these books aren't included with aren't included with chapters 1 through 12. Okay. Uh, the the quick answer 13. is that Daniel 1 through 12 is written in Hebrew and Aramaic. The added chapters are written in Greek, the Septuagint. Mm. Uh, this was part of the Apocrypha, which the Old Testament Christians rejected as being scriptural. It gives some interesting historical insights yeah. into between the 400 years. Somebody asked mm-hmm. a question about the silent years, but that's the reason it's not included in, in okay. the uh, it's like, typical process. It's, like, it's like Maccabees or mm-hmm. any of those. Yeah. Yeah. Co- contextually, they, they can help. Yeah. Culturally, they can help. So would that be, would, is that quick to answer the question about the 400 years? Yeah, yeah, I could. So, okay. so go ahead. Well, so they just completed the Old Testament. Curious what happened historically to the Jewish people during the 400 years of silence up to the New Testament when it picks up and Rome is currently in power. Okay, so if you follow the history of the Jews, you know, they, they had a short period, under 500 years, that they were a kingdom. And first, you know, 722, the Assyrians take away uh, the ten tribes, and then finally in 586, the Babylonians take away the remaining two tribes, but then they're restored. Isaiah prophesied they'd be restored under Cyrus, so when the Persians conquer the Babylonians, now they're allowed to go back and rebuild their temple. So you pick up Malachi, when Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, picks up, you're, you're under the Persian regime. Well, now the book of Daniel prophesied that after the Persian regime would come a Greek conqueror, which is Alexander the Great. That, that was historical. And um, you talk about that in one of your Bible studies. Yeah, yeah, and and, and then ultimately, um, you know, Rome comes along in 63 B.C. and and, and they they uh, take possession of Israel. So the point is this: between those years, Israel is is existent, but they're existent under the power of these various regimes. First it's the Persians, then it's the Greeks, then it's the Romans. And so they're functioning, but they're not functioning as a kingdom. They don't have a king on the throne. They'll never have a king on the throne until, you know, Jesus gets. So um, They had like puppet kings, basically, pu- right? Puppet kings. Herod was a puppet king. He, he was a, a, a political convenience. He, he went along, he was one of those guys, I'll, I'll go along to get along. Yeah. And so the Romans were like, okay, this guy isn't going to cause us any trouble, you know. Mm-hmm. And then his sons after him, uh, likewise. So there is some interesting history. Now, and here's just one little caveat. So, like, um, Alexander's empire splits up. He's got these four generals. They go their four ways, and they have these different uh, elements of the kingdom. Out of one of these, the Ptolemies, I believe it was, uh, comes this guy called Antiochus Epiphanes. And he is a bad dude. And he, he's in there somewhere around, you know, between 203 and 170 BC. He conquers um, the Jews, deliberately defiles their temple. He takes pig's blood, scatters it all over the temple, which defiled everything in it. And it sat that way, untouchable to a Jew, for um, six and a half years. 2300 days of sanctuary that Daniel talks about in his prophecy. He said the temple would sit defiled for 2300 days. It was exactly mm. after 2300 days, December 25th, which we now celebrate mm. as Christmas, it's the feast of dedication for the Jews. It was when the Maccabees that you were talking about, they fight back against Antiochus, they cleanse the temple, and they, they restore it to some degree. Now, the temple was 
damaged continuously in that 400 year period. It was damaged and fixed and damaged and fixed. And then Herod, who's called Herod the Great, who's around at Jesus' time, he had done extensive uh, repairs and modification to the temple. So he, he made it one of the wonders of the world during his time. So um, that, you know, th that was mm -hmm. the kind of stuff going on. It was during that time that the Jews formed uh, what were the power parties in Jesus' day, the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the ones that said, we're not going to have anything to do with Greek influence. Man, we're going to stay strictly to the God of the Bible in Hebrew. And then the Sadducees were more influenced by uh, Greece and its culture and its finery, and they became the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. They um, also didn't believe in the resurrection. No, they, which was they, why they were sad. You see, the Sadducees. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember my joke on last night? They uh, terrible. But they didn't. They didn't believe in anything supernatural, and they didn't believe in life after death. But those two parties come into existence during that 400-year period because the Jews were just scrambling to maintain their identity as these various, you know, cultures were clashing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the four kings, um, after Alexander dies, the four generals, their kingdoms just kept clashing with one another, and one would take uh, the temple area for a while, and then another one would come and take it back, and so there was just tons of Friction. wars. So they had to try to sur find a way to make their identity survive, and so the, the Pharisees, bad dudes as they turned out to be, they, they did do a good service to, to mm -hmm. a some extent. Unfortunately, by the time Jesus arrives, they had so distorted the character of the God. Their, their anger and their nationalism had fused together and distorted the image of God. They, they started making the image of God in the image of their anger and their nationalistic uh, fury, <laughs> essentially. And, um, of course, when, by the time Jesus comes, the God that they're representing is, is unrecognizable. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't yeah. look like God at all. Yeah. He's, he you're looks right. more like the devil than God. Wh 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 which, I'm going to say this carefully, there are well-meaning um, theologians and schools of theology can fall into the same thing. The, in their zeal for God, they end up presenting a caricature of God that is a heck of a lot more like the devil mm -hmm. than it is like God. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. We're, we're going to complete Final series um, that you guys have done such a wonderful job of, and I'm just going to be like the sweep up guy. You know, I'm just going to kind of repeat everything that you guys said, <laughs> and I'm going to add a sentence or two to it. <laughs> just don't cry. That guy last week he cried too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we're, we're just going to take one final look at the, the Christmas event, the Nativity Singularity, and we're going to look at it from the standpoint of. Um, the vulnerability of God and the potential. So we're going to look at the vulnerability and the potentiality. The vulnerability of God is the key to unleashing potentiality of righteousness and the abolition of evil in the universe as well as unleashing the potential of human beings to become the beings that God intended, Christ-like beings. Give it to us one more time. I don't know if I can say that again. <laughs> you know, it's, it. processor. <laughs> <laughs> it's on there. Join us. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a great, great final message in the series. And then plan to come 2 and 4 Christmas Eve, uh, online only for Christmas Day at 11.15, and then one service at 11.15, on New Year's Day, which is a Sunday. I, I want to just say one word. By, by all, by all I, means. I'm, I mean, I've been told. That was several words. I've been told. It's actually going to be a few words. Oh, okay. okay. You said I'm going to say one word. Yeah, I should have known better than saying that. I've been told that we are becoming a bunch of cream puff sissies as a culture. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I say that to say this. I hear, now you don't know about these things, but I hear mm. it may be extremely cold on Christmas Eve day. Okay. Mm. And there may be some snow lingering about. Mm. But we are not sissies. We are no. not no. We know right. that it's a dark from our warm houses to our warm cars. And then once our car is in the parking lot, it's a dark once again, yep. less than a minute, to get in the warm building. So we will be there, and we will be there in mass, and we will break our glasses if we have to. <laughs> those are very expensive, man. Be careful with those. <laughs> Should I and, my, my and, pastor Randy first nation? No, I won't. I won't. And, and I'll just say this. Um, if you have a friend that, that is a non-Christian, uh, the Christmas Eve night will be a mm, particularly good, good time to yeah. light them. Yeah. So, you're going uh, to kill it. It's going to be awesome. Well, I hope I hope I don't kill it. The song going, <laughs> the song going into it is going to be powerful, and the song coming out of it has good lyrics. I can tell you that for a fact.
it'll be even more powerful. <laughs> All right. Join us Sunday, 11.15, 9.15, but not in that order. 9.15 and 11.15. It's going to be awesome. We will see you Because, then. once again, we're not cream puffs. We, no. We're, 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 we're sit at home and watch it on a screen unless oh, we drilled it. Listen, it. the only reason only we sit at home and watch me. it on a screen is when we're, we're sick. sick. We're sick. Yeah, Other sick. than that, we're gathering yeah. with the people of God because we are we followers it. of Christ and we will not be stopped. We do not give up meeting no. together. But just because we get Summer up and we feel a little, a little sluggish on Sunday morning. So what? We, we, we gather. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Right. As we love you. We'll see you on Sunday. We're going to keep talking back here, but you can go do whatever you guys do. Bye.